This is a video on how to solve inequality in real-world problems that involve them. So this video will cover the basics of reading and plotting inequalities on graphs and using the extra rule to solve inequalities. There will be an additional video of using the method to solve inequality word problems. So first thing is just these inequality symbols. So we read uh, left to right in English. And so when you come to the wider end of the inequality, we call that greater. Um, the narrow would be less than. So if you're reading in this direction, we would call this one less than. If it has a line underneath it here, that would be less than or equal to. So this one here is greater than greater than or equal to, kind of like a half equal sign here, uh, less than, and then less than or equal to. So graphing these, um, if they are just greater than, it will be an open circle. So for example, if we have x is greater than 5, you would put this circle right at 5, and because x is on the left, this acts as the tip of the arrow pointing to the right. So you would shade in everything going to the right. If it is, say, x is greater than or equal to 5, it would be a shaded in circle, again, pointing to the right. If you have x on the left and it's less than, this, again, acts as the tip of the arrow, if you will, pointing to the left. So if this is x is less than, let's make it 3 this time, You'd put a 3 here, open circle, shade it in, going to the left. Um, X on the left, less than or equal to, again, 3 would be a shaded in circle here, going to the left. Now, I, I will talk about why this is when we do some other problems as uh, we go. Uh, what I mean is keeping the variable on the left, the letter on the left, then this acts as the tip of the arrow in terms of what should be shaded in. So, solving inequalities, just like equations, by using inverse operations. So, in other words, if you see addition, you're going to do subtraction. If you see multiplication, you're going to undo it with division. If you see division, you're going to undo it with multiplication. But there is an extra rule. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, when using inverse operations, you must switch the sign. So, we'll do some examples here of this. So here's when you don't have to do the extra rule. Um, you'll see here the, the number in front of the variable is not negative. So just quickly solving this, you would subtract 15 on both sides. These cancel out. 30 minus 15 is 15. So now you have 3x is greater than 15. You divide by a positive 3 on both sides. Those cancel out or become 1 and x is greater than 5. So you would put a, an open circle here at 5. Since the x is on the left, you would shade in everything going in that direction. Now up here, we are going to require to use that extra rule. It's going to be the same thing. Here's our size of the equation. We subtract 15 on both sides. These cancel out. 30 minus 15 is still 15. And then we drop down this negative 3. So we haven't switched the sign yet, but when we divide here by a negative 3, we're going to get a negative 5 down here, and we do have to switch the sign. Okay, so now we're going to put our open circle here, and it's going to go this way. Because we still have our variable on the left, and just like it's pointing to the left, if you think of this again as the tip of the arrow, it points to the left. So there was one example. Here's another example, and I'll show you the multiple choice. So here's no extra rule. Um, so plus 6 on both sides. You're going to end up with 8 over here. So now you have x divided by 3 is less than or equal to 8. To get rid of this divided by 3, you multiply both sides by 3. x is less than or equal to 24. Now, look what I did here, though, for these multiple choice. I And they'll do this on the GED where they actually put the variable on the right. You solved it with a variable on the left. So this is an important skill to know how to do as well, where we have to switch these. So let's put 24 here 
and x, but we need to keep the relationship the, the same. We've got the pointy end going to x, the wide end going to 24. We have to keep that same relationship. Uh, that's a positive 24, so the answer that we're looking for is d here. Now, let's do the one here that requires the extra rule. Again, starting it off the same, we're going to add 6 to both sides. This is going to give us 8 is less than or equal to x divided by a negative 3. We multiply both sides by a negative 3. Um, so uh, that's going to be negative 24. So we've got x. Uh, compared to negative 24, we do have to switch the sign, though. So we're going to have the wide end pointing to x, the narrow end pointing to negative 24. Now, I did the same thing here for these multiple choice. So um, we're going to have to switch it again because we have the, the number here on the left. So let's keep negative 24 here on the left, uh, x on the right. Keep the relationship the same. So we actually have to switch it again, but we're still keeping the relationship the same. The wide end is pointing to x here and in this one. So our answer, um, it looks like it is A. All right. Now, uh, here's another example, and I, I want to show you that you can actually do these two different ways. And so this way over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this 15x to the left. And I'm going to take this negative 14 or this minus 14 and move it to the right. So let's subtract 15x here, and let's subtract 15x here. Now, 9 minus 15x is going to be negative 6x. Let me change the color here so you can see. I'm going to add 14 here, and I'm going to add 14 over here. That's going to be 42. So now we have negative 6x is greater than 42. We end up dividing by a negative 6 on both sides. That's going to cause us to switch the sign. So now x is less than negative 7. Negative 6 goes into 42, negative 7 times. Of course, use a calculator. You probably would have a calculator uh, for a problem like this on the GED. So um, let's hold off on graphing it. I just want to show you can do this a different way if you want. So you could subtract 9x here and subtract 9x over here, and you're going to get positive 6x on this side. Then when you subtract 28, over here and you subtract 28 here, this is going to, to be um, negative 42. Negative 14 minus 28 is negative 42. Again, put that in the calculator. I don't want to dive into that too much right now. Um, now we're going to divide by a positive 6. That's a positive 6. So x is going to be on the right side x is less than negative 7. Same way, if we read it in this direction, x is less than negative 7. If we read this one in the same direction, x is less than negative 7. Let's go ahead and flip this so you can see, again, keeping the relationship the same, we need this to be at negative 7. It's going to be an open circle at negative 7 pointing to the left. So c is, our, is the answer that we want. Okay. So two ways of doing these. I don't know which way is easier. I typically do this way. Typically try to teach all my students, move the variable to the left, move the variable to the left. All right, so where can you practice these on Khan Academy? So if you type in and go search Khan Academy plotting inequalities, this is just a basic, real basic, where you can switch the direction of the blue line here, and you can make the circle open or closed. Great way to learn uh, just the basics of plotting and graphing inequalities. Then there is a video, or sorry, an exercise on Khan Academy for just two-step inequalities. So you're solving these uh, a little bit easier. And then later on, there are multi-step linear inequalities. These are the ones you're most likely to see on the GED. This is the high school one. HSA stands for high school algebra, uh, where this one is seventh grade. So you can search for both of them. I'll try to put links down in the bottom here. And uh, do check out the other video about how to solve um, GED problems that involve inequality word problems. So thank you so much.